Michaela Nogura in a cult? Let's talk about this drama. Now, all this drama happened over on TikTok because the CEO of Farsali, which his name is Sal, made a video calling out Michaela. Now, in the video, he was saying that he wants to challenge Michaela to do this gig. Let me worry the clip. Here we go. Your makeup looks like shit and you're broke. I'm using that quote to buy a billboard in Times Square. Hear me out. This is from Michaela. So I watched your video and you recommended three products for face prep. Hyaluronic acid, Neutrogena Hydro Boost, Hydro Touch for Mix. So your total budget friendly routine was $68.58. The products you recommended are great, but they only hydrate. I have a $39 solution that not only hydrates using peptides and ceramides, but also improves skin tone using vitamin C and niacinamide. It's just one single product. Here's my proposal, Michaela. I'll send it to you and if you make a on honest video about it, even if you don't like it, I'll buy a billboard with your face on it in Times Square and it can say whatever you want. But you have to use the product consistently for three weeks. Let me know if you're up for it and I'll make it happen. Okay, so when he posted that video, you know me, I've been I've been watching Sal, the CEO for Sally for years now and I do enjoy his content. I love it because it's very dramatic. It brings a drama. It's always like, I walked out on it and this is why. I walked away three years ago and it's been working out for me. You won't believe what happened and this is why. I gave all my money to my wife and this is why I walked out on her. And this is why, like it's always very dramatic. And even though I know it's all hyped up, like I, I just, I can't stop watching. I think, I don't know, it's so interesting. Anyways, so let me tell you what happened, okay? So Varsali was this amazing skincare brand. It was in so many stores. It was in a lot of Sephora, because that's how I remember it. Varsali just came back. It's that serum that no one knew what it did. <laughs> we sold over a hundred million dollars of product within three years, but we up. Here's how. Before anything else, I am so humbled that Michaela featured us. Michaela, on behalf of my wife and myself, we're very thankful for your support. Everyone wanted a piece of Farsali back in 2017, 2018. Everyone was just so drawn to the visual aspect of Farsali because it was so different back then. But a part of me is sad because I wish we did a better job at educating what our products did. Product education is what everyone was doing and we stood out by focusing on the visuals only. Even though our ingredients are science backed and formulated by the same chemists that formulate for the top brands in Sephora and Ulta, we just never talked about the science in a meaningful way. Because our visual gimmicks, as people like to call them, just worked. You couldn't scroll your feed without seeing a Farsali product. And because of this, we were so blessed to be able to expand in Sephora in over 35 countries and we were the number one selling brand in Sephora's next big thing in USA. What I'm not sad about is we were also so blessed to have built such an amazing community. That and I, I remember going to Sephora and buying some of it because I saw some of my favorite influencers at that time were buying it. So I bought it too. And then I remember I got it in my boxy charms. I was like freaking shook. And it was like a whole thing, right? And then Farsali just kind of like out of the stores. I mean, they're still around. You can still shop on the website. But it's because he wanted to focus on having a happy wife, happy life, and pursuing, I believe, like having children and just focusing their energy on that. Because running a company, it could be very stressful. Hold on, girl. I gotta fix this dumb eyelash. How you know the drama's good? All right. So time has passed. They're back at it again, trying to bring some more brand awareness that Farsali's still here. Okay, cool. So I think that this was one of the ways that the CEO of Farsali could bring some attention to his brand by basically inviting Michaela to, you know, I don't talk about the brand or try it or something. And so that was that, right? I was like, okay, it's a good, that's a good marketing strategy. And it has worked way better than a billboard for $4,000, $5,000. Let me tell you why. So on his Instagram, you can see it here. I, I circled it right there, girl. On his Instagram, that video calling out Michaela has 4.5 million views. 4.5 million views. That's probably more views than he would have got on a billboard. Because on the billboard, I probably just would have walked past it and not, not cared, right? This was more engaging. This was more interesting, right? His TikTok before that, 226,000. The one before that, 1 million. The one before that, 74,000. So this was a very good video. That was a very good video for him. In matter of fact, the videos that he's pinned at the top, 2 million, 1 million. This video right here is the hottest video he's dropped in a while, according to what I'm seeing here, right? So then, Michaela, best, she never spoke. 
the news team here. She didn't respond yet. However, Michaela Negura's fans have responded and was calling him. Let me show you the clip. Here we go. Roll it. Ladies, we do not negotiate with terrorists. This person just called me a terrorist and made some bold accusations. Sal starts off by threatening to blackmail Michaela. You obviously misunderstood my video. He is trying to blackmail a woman into promoting his products. And it's okay if you don't agree with my content, but calling me a terrorist is way over the line. Ladies, we do not negotiate with terrorists. I won't call you a racist or privileged, but I will enlighten you because you'll never experience the random security checks every time you travel because of how you look or randomly have a stranger accuse you of carrying a bomb when you're just innocently walking to your office with a lunch bag. I can't control how I look, but I can control how I react. So I'm not complaining or trying to attack you. I'm just trying to get you to understand why your comment was problematic. You don't have to support my brand or my content, but let me make one thing clear. If I wanted to be malicious like you think I am, I could have easily exposed your identity. The internet is unforgiving and I don't wish that for you. So I really hope this was a learning opportunity. For oh girl. It, it just got severe up in here. So I think the CEO of Farsali handled it very well. It's, you know what, like when I watched it back and like, I'm gonna watch it back with you with like with what Sal did. Okay, check it out. Like, I, I can't, this is like, people should pay attention to how he did it. Here Ladies, we go. Ladies, we do not negotiate with terrorists. This person just called me a terrorist and made some bold accusations. Sal starts off by threatening to blackmail Michaela. You obviously misunderstood my video. He's trying to blackmail a woman into promoting his products. And it's okay if you don't agree with my content, but call Calling me a terrorist is way over the line. Ladies, we do not negotiate with terrorists. I won't call you a racist or privileged, but I will enlighten because you'll never experience he said, basically he's not gonna call her out. He could have. He said, I'm not gonna basically play this name game, but let me enlighten you. And when he went on to talk about his own experiences. Just random security checks every time you travel because of how you look. Or randomly have a stranger accuse you of carrying a bomb when you're just innocently walking to your office. I think he handled it so good. And I also feel like this is what some CEOs do is they'll like, they'll stray away from it. So instead of him seeing that video and just pff, whatever, random hater, they don't know me. They don't know me they don't know my life they don't even know me right he could have did that but what he did is he called them out shine light on it and now you have people rallying behind him behind behind that makes sense i can't spell today wait no i can't spoke today no way i can't speak today there you go rallying behind him and these are what some of the people had to say because i screenshot it i thought it was very interesting and shout out credit to the reddit because it always come for me here we go Michaela's stands are disgusting as delusional as she is like what kind of ish is this i commented that her fans went after linda hernandez and now they're pulling this, I'm convinced it's now a cult. And hold on. And it started to look like one that's less than friendly towards POC. Mm -hmm. Followed by, this is absolutely foul. This is a type of ish that should turn people away from Michaela. Her stands will jump off buildings for her. And for what? Michaela can give two ish about other people. As long as no one comes for her with the truth about her. And heaven forbid anyone looks at Cody. You know, remember, you do not, you do not talk about Cody. So, hear me out. I'm a juxtapose here. I went over to the Farsali website. Okay, so when I was there, I saw that they had a brand new makeup product. All right, and I was like, this is actually kind of genius. This is it right here, okay? This is actually kind of genius. So on the website, they have this new product called the Reset. My wife just tripled our expenses and I couldn't say no. Let me explain. She wanted to change this from a bottle into a jar. It took a few thousand dollars, but I made it happen. Then all of a sudden, she doesn't like it in her nails, wants to change the product name and starts complaining. At this point, I'm ready to quit. I talk to our supplier who gives me one last option with a catch. An airless pump jar that gets all the product out without having to dip your fingers in. But the catch is it costs three times as much as a glass jar, Damn. which is way too much. My wife says that we should absorb this cost because it's a recession, but we're a small business and we have to cover costs. I tell her that if our volumes increase, then we can absorb the cost. My wife is a sweetheart and was really adamant on keeping the same price because she's confident that our volumes will increase. I just want to see my wife happy. So I agreed to absorb the cost on this next batch, but we can't guarantee this price forever. So here I am putting inventory back in stock and hoping that my wife is right. Or you see, it says, the $70,000 formula as a picture. I think that's his wife, not sure. So I'm like $70,000 formula. It's like, it's so dramatic. It works. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Nina Garcia from Project Runway and she's like, the look was horrible. The stitching was off. 
Did you hem? Did you stone those tights? But somehow it works and I love it. Like it's kind of, that's how I kind of feel, right? The product looks amazing. I feel like it works just based off the video right here. Like what? Oh my God. Then if you look at the bottom, right? Cause I was like, okay, $70,000. Let's talk about it. In here, here's what it says. Reset your skin with the multitasking stress recovery serum cream, the ultimate solution for brighter, smoother, and firmer skin. All right, great. $39, $39. And if you sign up for the website, you save 15% off. Not sponsored, although I should be. Then it says from dull textured uneven skin to smooth and glowy AF. All right, then they start talking about how they, how they got to this $70,000 multitasking formula that began in April, 2021. In here, it talks about the woman had a baby. You can see that right there. And how maybe she was like tired and her um, her skin was getting like flaky and dry. And when she did have time to herself, she just wanted to go to sleep and rest. That's what basically all this is. And how this was like her, her gig, she would use all this stuff. And how she wanted to put all that into one thing that did all that. Which is very interesting because I'm looking at this. It said, Sal started by identifying the key active ingredients in Farah's skincare routine. And this was the skincare routine right here. And then when I'm looking at it, I'm like, girl, you got Tatcha Violet Sea Cream. You have the Niacinamide by the Inky List. Then you have Good Jeans by Sunday. I mean, um, Good Jeans Sunday Rise. That's like $100 already. Okay, which I love that, that works so good. Then you got uh, Drunk Elephant Peptide Cream, and then you also have Skin Fix Barrier. So you're gonna tell me that these five products is in one jar for $30? And then they had 20 versions of it, and you woody woody, well, that's like that, right? Then they show like pictures of how it helped and things like that. Now, okay, let's talk about this. By day 30, it improved the hyperpigmentation and she noticed visible improvements of hyperpigmentation on her cheeks. Her skin was better than ever. $70,000 later, she threw a curveball. And it just talks about that, about like the jar and she didn't, want, she didn't want the jar or something like that. Okay, anyways, I digress. It's a full story on there. And if you just remove yourself out of it, him calling out Michaela, receiving the backlash, and for those who care, who are interested in it, they're now on the website reading about this, the product that he was promoting, the story behind it, and it's like, oh my God, this is either a fluke or a marketing genius strategy. And I like to think that this was pure, just genius. It's like genius because, and let me tell you why, let me tell you why. There is no doubt that Farsali skincare is decent skincare, hands down, hands down. So you have this decent skincare, right? How do you survive? in a world where it's basically pay to play. It's basically like, who's gonna get the, the front gondola at the Sephora? Or go to the website and you're right there front and center. I mean, let's just, I mean, there, there, there's no doubt about it that if I open up the Sephora app, the first couple of products that is shown in my face will probably sell by 30% more than usual because it's right there in your face. Especially if you're in like the new section, right? So if you're like starting out with a skincare brand or trying to restart again, it's very difficult, especially in this day and age when you got so many brands competing for your dollar. You're, you at home. You, hold, hello. Let's see. La Mer, love it. Chanel, and you got Dior, you got those legacy brands. They're not going anywhere, they got deep pockets. How you compete against that, right? So here you have Farsali coming in with claims of like, you see these five products? I can give it to you in one bottle. Okay, but how do how we know about it? Here he is talking about one of the biggest influencers on TikTok, th then has drama with her, with her fan base basically. And now I'm interested. Now I feel hooked. Now I wanna support. Now I wanna buy. You know what I'm saying? And I probably will buy it. Hello? Anyways, I just think it was genius. Wish him the best and must success. And I feel like, <laughs> If Michaela would have reviewed the Farsali thing, I probably would not have bought it because I just don't trust Michaela's reviews. I'm sorry. I just, I just don't, okay? Michaela review anything with the paycheck behind it. That's what I think. And that's what a lot of the general consensus is, is on TikTok and the internet is that this woman will, girl, there's a big fat check. I love it so much. Oh, thank you for the $75,000. Let me talk to you about this Farsali. Oh, oh, I love it so much. I use it all the time. Let me tell you. I've been using it for such a long time. So many of you guys have been asking me what's been on my skin for so long. And I've been keeping it a secret until today. I've been using Farsali. Like that, that girl, she would have did that whole gig. You know she would did her, that whole gig, okay? Anyways, I just wanna say, whether you think that the CEO of Farsali was being calculated in this move, 
whether you think that it was a strategic marketing strategy or you think it was a fluke. I think that either way, it was a genius thing to do because here we are talking about Farsali, the new product that he has, and Michaela drama. It's like a perfect recipe. It's literally the perfect recipe. And he did it in a way where it didn't make him look bad. Michaela, on the other hand, has yet, has yet to even take him up on his offer. I mean, listen, yes, I understand that maybe Michaela doesn't view the CEO of Farsali on the same level as her, okay? I mean, he doesn't even have a million followers. He just doesn't, okay? But this is a person who is, everybody know his name, he's deep rooted in the game. So I think it would be in her best interest to entertain Farsali's introduction, but she didn't. And I'm just, I just don't understand why once she didn't, okay, she didn't do it, whatever. She thinks beneath her, fine, whatever. She stuck up her nose up, okay, fine. But now that her own fans are doing this, I think it would be in her best interest to say, hey guys, I don't condone this behavior. I disavow. And, cause I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it in my comments. I know I'm gonna get it in my comments. Well, Rich Lit, she can't control her fan base. I, yeah, she cannot, she cannot. She can say, hey guys, I know I can't control what you guys do or say on my behalf, but I would really appreciate it if you guys did not send, you know, bad vibes to people and keep it classy. And if you see someone talking about me, just ignore it. Like she could easily say all that. And um, she just doesn't. So I feel like she's letting it happen. And like, again, I wanna reiterate, I know she cannot control her fan base, but she can at least put that, that warning out there. She's never done, I've never seen her do, I've never seen her do that. And we have Selena Gomez, who gets up on video or camera or Instagram and sit there and say, don't send negative vibes to Hailey Bieber. She can't do that to Farsali Sal. I, I don't understand. I, I just don't get it. Girl, but whatever. It doesn't matter what I think about all this drama. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. I will be watching. I will be reading your guys' comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. I love you so much.